Hi, I'm Sultana Jones, author of Innocent Blood. I've been reading out of chapter five, The Conflict. And uh, if you want to see what's going on with uh, Bill and Clint, join me. Where am I? They are at a restaurant at the moment having drinks and eating something at the, um, let's see. All right, let me back it up a little. All right. Bill is talking. And that, okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need some time off, Clint. Get some rest. Think about this for a while. That's just it, Bill. I said, I know it's only been a very short while, but I've thought this out over and over and over again. And I know it makes no sense now, but I only hope it will one day. Bill still looked confused and concerned. That's it? All of those years together, and this is the conclusion? You've come to? Clint, you sound mad. I shook my head and turned in this, the situation around on him. No, Bill, I don't. Look at you. You used to have so much life. You used to laugh and joke and smile. Now look at you. You hardly laugh. You're short with people almost mean. Where is your joy now? You are the life. You and your wife are on the edge of divorce. And for what? This life, the life of an unborn child and money? We are pediatricians, live babies, remember? Then Bill interrupted. Well, we all came to that decision and we all have benefited from it, if I recall. I rubbed my hands through my hair in frustration. Well, I don't need money stained with blood. Bill pointed a fork at me. Well, that stained money bought you your condo and that nice car you drive around in. It's funny how the money that the money is stained now, but what about then? Come on, Clint. You are going over the edge a bit. You can be a Christian and do this too. Lots of people do it. I slowly shook my head. No. Bill, I found out that God is real. And to keep on doing what I'm doing would be... I looked him straight in the eyes wrong. There is no logic to what you're saying, Clint. You're telling me that because of some new faith, God is making you throw away everything we've worked for? Clint, won't you reconsider? I shook my head. No. Bill threw up his hands in the air. Then, that's it then. I guess there's no turning you. Bill took a deep breath. I knew something else was coming. I didn't have to wait long. Clint, Ted is going to sue you. I nodded, I know. Bill cleared his throat and stood. Then I have nothing else to say to you. We'll see you in court. With that, Bill walked away from the table, paid the check, and left. 
I sat there in silence for about half an hour. I thought about the times we had to spend together, the years I've spent with their families, their kids knowing me as Uncle Clint. I was feeling really low about this time, but I knew that Jesus himself asked me to stop. I never returned to that office again. The drive home seemed long. So much had happened in such a little time. I walked into my house and set my box of stuff on the table. The next morning I was awakened to a knock at my door. I opened it, reporters crowded the doorway, taking my picture and firing questions at me. Is it true you stole money from your patients. What did you do with the money? How long have you embezzled money? I held up my hand. What? What are you talking about? Dr. Clint, are you depressed? The reporter, a reporter I recognized from the local television station asked, no, what are your views about abortion now? A female reporter asked me, jamming the microphone to my face. I, I, the questions caught me off guard. I blinked into the bright lights of the camera and, t and looked around. Why, why did you leave? Please, please stop. No more questions, please. Is it true? And I shoved them back and slammed the door. Just then the phone rang and I stumbled to it, my head still spinning from what just happened. Hello? Good morning, sunshine. Judy? Yes, it's me. She lowered her voice. I thought I'd give you the, a call to see, what, um, to see what happened yesterday. Dr. Ted filled me in at the end of the day. He was not very happy. I wondered what would happen when I gave you, I wonder what would happen when I give him my notice. I thought it would stay as long as I could and talk to as many girls as I can. As, uh, as I can before I get the boot. Hmm. I know that when Dr. Ted and Dr. Bill find out, what I'm doing, I'm history. I took a steady breath and glanced at the front door, making sure I had locked it. I'm, I'm fine, just a little bit shook up. I was greeted this morning by a swarm of reporters. I know, Dr. Ted was talking to a reporter yesterday. He says he's going to kill your reputation. I slumped into the chair. Great, that's all I need. I talked to Katrina last night. I told her what was going on. She prayed for you and me. I felt peace in my heart for the first time in a long time. <laughs> she has that effect on people, I said with a smile. Katrina had already changed my life so much. Dr. Ted is really going through the, with this. I heard him talking to B Dr. Bill. You should think about getting a lawyer. Look, I have to go. I'm at the office and, and my first blessing has walked through the door. I'll talk to you later, bye. Bye. I, I could not explain the mixed emotions. Just the thought Ted was going after me like this ate with him, shared his family everything, and now he wanted to sue me? I felt a flash of anger rise, but for a brief moment, and then it was gone. That was strange. Any other time, I would have brooded over that anger for a day or two, but now I just felt pity, plain pity. I'm going to have to end this right now. The reading of Innocent Blood, A Story of Redemption. 
I hope that you're able to join me and as I read some more of this book you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and uh, Zulon Press okay God bless you and remember Jesus loves you and I do too bye bye